grip that I recommend for your forehand is either Eastern or semi-Western. Okay, now using our racket handle, remember it's octagonal or eight-sided. So we're gonna give those sides numbers. Starting on top, we've got number one. The little bevel on, side, on the side there is two, three here on the side, four underneath, and five all the way on the bottom. Now it'd be the same thing for a left-hander going the other way. Five's always on the bottom, one's always on top. Now using the hand as our reference point, we're gonna use the index knuckle on the inside of the hand where that X is, and we've got an X on the heel of the hand. Now for an Eastern grip, we're gonna put those X's on number three. Remember, number three is over here, so we put the X on the side of the handle, number three. That's our Eastern grip. Okay, now with Eastern, you're gonna to have to push the palm of the hand down slightly to close the face of the racket, because remember, a closed face racket at the low point of the backswing will guarantee you a vertical racket at contact. Now, semi-western grip. We're going to take the X's on the hand and we're going to put them on number four. Four is that little bevel just underneath. So we put the X's on number four and we notice that the racket face is automatically closed. So this take the, takes the guesswork out. Once the racket is automatically cl closed at the low point of the backswing, simply swing from the shoulder and you're guaranteed vertical at contact. Now, as far as a ready position, if you're holding your forehand grip, if you have the, the index knuckle and the heel of the, the, the X's on uh, number four, the racket face will automatically be closed. Then just remember, keep it closed as you come back, and the racket's closed at the low point of the backswing. Now, if you're on number three, the racket's gonna tend to pretty much stand up straight ahead. So close the face of the racket in your ready position by pushing the palm inward. Okay, so now you're closed, and you're closed at the low point of the backswing. First of all, we're talking about driving the ball or hitting it with topspin. I'm not talking about slice shots or miss hits. Now, once you get your racket back at this point here, now notice the racket and ball are on the same level. If I swing straight across, the ball doesn't have a prayer. It's not going to clear the net from the baseline because gravity will pull it down way too fast. So once I get to here, my racket's back, let's say I'm gonna contact the ball right here. I've gotta drop the racket at least a foot lower than this point. That's why tennis pros are famous for saying bend your knees. So then I bend the knees, drop the racket down a foot lower, now I'm swinging up to hit the ball, so when the ball leaves my strings, the ball is ascending, it's going up. Once you get that racket back, if you swing horizontally like this, you're not going to clear the net. So remember, that's all you need to know for the rest of your life when you're driving the ball or hitting it with topspin. Once you get to here, you've got to drop it down a good foot below the ball. That goes for wherever you're making contact if you're trying to uh, drive it or hit it with topspin because you're gonna hit balls in a lot of different spots. You might hit one here, the next one is here, the next one's up here. But wherever it is, you still have to come down at least a foot lower than the ball to swing up. Even on a shoulder high ball from the baseline, you have to swing up to get good net clearance. Okay, concentrate on this next drill, and it's all you need to know for the rest of your life as far as clearing the net. One foot below, shoulder to the chin. Remember, you've got to drop that racket a foot below the contact point before you swing forward and up. Shoulder to the chin, again, is going to prevent forearm and wrist roll. So concentrate on our two points. One foot below, shoulder to the chin. Here we go. At this point, the racket is one foot below the contact point. This ensures a nice low to high swing, which gives you net clearance. Many times, players fail to get the racket one foot below the ball because they're not bending their knees. You know, tennis pros are famous for saying, bend your knees, but remember the reason you're bending is to get the racket down. 
if you bend but the racket stays up, you're defeating the purpose. So remember to keep your hitting shoulder loose and relaxed so the racket drops down. If you notice right now, my rear shoulder is slightly lower than my front shoulder. Now I have a nice low to high swing. Okay, the next drill, sit in the chair and keep the rear shoulder or the hitting shoulder lower. Many times players bend, but if you're bending and you keep the racket up, you're defeating the purpose. So remember, rear shoulder slightly lower than the front shoulder, that way the racket's dropping down. So keep that hitting shoulder loose. Okay, so we're concentrating on the two points, sitting in the chair and the rear shoulder or hitting shoulder lower than the front shoulder. Here we go. sailing long beyond the baseline, it's usually because the racket is tilted or laid back at contact. Other than slice shots, on 90% of your shots in this game, you want the racket vertical when you make contact with the ball. Usually players make the mistake of being open on the backswing. When I talk about the backswing, what I'm talking about is what you do from the ready position to here. That's your backswing. From here to here is considered your backswing. Now, if I bring the racket back, now watch my racket head here. If I bring it back and the racket face opens up, see I've made a movement with my wrist and forearm and opened the racket face up. Now, I have to make a corresponding movement with my wrist and forearm like this to make the racket vertical. So remember that if you're hitting long, the racket is tilted back or laid back, and the mistake is probably made on your backswing. You're opening the face of the racket. Okay, this next drill, concentrate on this one if you're having the problem of hitting your forehand long beyond the baseline. Remember, by keeping the racket face closed on your backswing, that's key. Many players open up on the backswing. So keep it closed as you're coming back, and the palm of the hand facing down at the low point of the backswing. When that racket's a foot below the ball, the contact point, the palm of the hand is facing down. So remember now, use your brain, tell yourself, face closed, palm down. That way you'll be sending the signals to your body and you'll be doing it when you need to. All right, here we go. We're thinking face closed, palm down. Notice the racket face is closed on the backswing. At this point, the palm is down, the racket face is closed. This prevents forehands beyond the baseline. Remember, if you're too wristy or if you're rolling the forearm when you're trying to hit that slow serve, you're going to get all kinds of scenarios. Remember, most players that are wristy are coming into the hitting zone with a slightly open racket face. Now, all of these shots are going to go long. Anytime the racket's laid back slightly, it's going to go long. So as you start to roll, okay, but all this is long. It's all long until you get to here, until you get to vertical. Okay, that shot will stay in, but now you're rolling again, and all these shots start to go down. So remember, if you're a wrist roller, you're only going to have that one, boom, opportunity right there to keep the ball in the court. On the other hand, if you don't use the wrist and the forearm, and if you just swing from the shoulder, watch what happens. Now, you start below the ball, you're coming up. By the time you get to the contact point, the racket's vertical. Now, remember, the racket will stay vertical for a foot to a foot and a half as long as you're swinging from the shoulder. The racket's moving on a low to high plane. It stays vertical in that hitting area for a foot to foot and a half. So you've got a foot to a foot and a half where the racket's vertical. On the other hand, if you're rolling the wrist and forearm, you've only got, boom, that one moment, that one millisecond to keep the ball in the court. So remember, swing from your shoulder and use as little wrist and forearm movement as possible. Here the returner is moving forward and attacking with a big swing on a slow serve. Notice the swing is from the shoulder and the racket head stays vertical in the contact area for about one to one and a half feet. Thank you. 